You'll never meet a Republican that uses pronouns. It's just a fact. It's only everybody the left. uses pronouns. Just Everyone some people choose to enlist okay, well, their pronouns. Okay, well, my pronouns now for the rest of the time are pretty princess. That's not a pronoun. That's not. Even, that, those are not even pronouns. Okay, so what are your that's, Z that's Z Z even, I think you mentioned that conservatives don't get offended by speech as much, but conservatives get offended by pronouns, they got offended by Mr. Potato Head, <laughs> they get offended by all I kinds of- really stupid <laughs> things. I would like to push back a little bit about conservatives being offended by pronouns. I think it's more so that they are being forced to acquiesce to the pronouns of other people, which is, you know, a form of, you know, controlling speech. The person I've ever met that uses pronouns acts exactly the same, so the day I meet well, one that doesn't, hold okay, on. go I th off. I, first of all, everybody uses pronouns, yeah. but the people that don't, that announce their pronouns are not all at the same, but I agree that, of course, there's going to be some commonalities. Mm -hmm. It's more about what you said about compelled speech, which, you have a right to not use someone's pronouns. If you're walking down the street, you don't have to use their pronouns. You have the First Amendment. But when you're in a private institution or in a school or in a college or something like that, they can have rules and there's already compelled speech. For example, you would never go to church with your grandma and then say the F word in church because you're in church and that would be inappropriate. And be inappropriate, we have a form of compelled speech. Yeah, Is that I think any argument of morality will at some point down the line arrive at an argument of religion. You don't need God for morality first and foremost because that actually makes things more difficult. Now I have to convince the guy who thinks it's fun to kill people that actually it's bad to kill people because God says so and Why then I have to convince him bad? about God and then I have to convince him that my God is right. Yeah. Instead what I can do is say evolutionarily we have evolved to be social creatures. If we have humans that are just murdering for fun senselessly, society will collapse unless that behavior is done away with. This comes from a collective interest in benefiting all of society, we don't need religion So you're just saying so you, you shouldn't do it because it's unpractical. Right. You're, no, I'm doing it because you... I care about me. I don't want to live in a world where I get murdered. I don't want to live in a world where my daughter is at risk of getting murdered. You want or... the serial killer to realize that you don't want to get murdered, so he shouldn't murder people. No, that's but why that's, we collectively that's, as humans that's will that's say that serial human. killer's wrong. The serial killer might not think it's wrong, and if he has no sense of knowing it's wrong, then he's a psychopath. And if we allow deliberate harming of other humans, then society will crumble. Personally, I don't think you should be able to vote if you receive any kind of paycheck from the government, mm -hmm. which is a controversial opinion, but I think a you ridiculous have. ridiculous uh, opinion, too. Uh, this is something I've been thinking about. I'm not saying I'm sold <laughs> on it, but I think okay. it might be better that you don't have I a mean, conflict of interest when you're voting if you're getting right. a paycheck Look from the right. government. Yeah. To your everyone has, everyone a has a conflict of right. interest yeah. when yeah. you're and, voting. And, like, Everybody's trying no, to you're vote for their own interests. you from the people you're voting for. Yeah, I see how that would be And some millionaires vote for Republicans because they get tax breaks. Everybody votes a certain way to benefit themselves, right? right. So yeah. when you restrict that for one person and then let other people do it, you then isolate that group of people from even being able to participate in this democracy and inevitably they are going to get left out on the entire country's growth. And, if you take and those people, away, why should they be lost? Why should they not be allowed to participate in their country? It affects them just like everyone else. There was a big discussion about whether or not you should have skin in the game to be able to vote. Mm -hmm. um, what about being an American <laughs> citizen right. so the policies directly affect you? I think that's skin in the game. That's a fact that there are detransitioners. What is not a fact is that that there's some kind of this epidemic with all of these detransitioners. When you look at it, what are the overall regret rates? Regret rate for transition is lower than the regret rate for knee surgery. They've done surveys with surgeons who perform these surgeries and they find that the regret rate is astronomically low. The detransition rate is not this massive thing like this epidemic. However, that doesn't mean that people who detransition are not valid. It doesn't mean that people who have been diagnosed wrongly should have their voices shut down. Suicide rate's very high. We don't know the for numbers Do, yet. For, well, yeah. hold on. I mean, that's the, everyone. The suicide rate is high for trans people primarily because of external reasons. Not because of transitioning. Which, but which is tra another thing that's really interesting is conservatives say trans people are bad and invalid and then trans people commit suicide and they say, oh look, trans people are bad because they commit suicide. It's like, no, no, you just did that. You guys did that because when you constantly perpetuate- I made when you constantly perpetuate, the way they're treated when you in society. Perpe How are they treated? Society? Yeah, Hold they're on. the when, most protected. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> they're not. Trans so. people are are victimized by violent crime at higher rates. They are well, kicked out of their homes at higher rates. They insisted that you know gender and sex are two different things. Do you and disagree with that? I do disagree because gender, at the end of the day, all they're describing, in my opinion, is aesthetics and how you dress. Personality. And, right, and it's, it's a great- It's not personality, it's your internal sense of self in relation to the external concept of gender. And so it's, if you're born into a world where because of the set of genitalia you have, there is a set of expectations placed on you and a set of aesthetics, yes. You're a male, so you're gonna wear a suit. That's nothing biological, that's social, obviously. We decide that. But but what, well, hold on, while you're raised that way, that becomes an internal part of yourself. And so when you have an internal sense of self in relation to the external social construct of gender, it does make sense that you can have individuals who would have a different sense of self that can align with a different external social construct. But the culture now is saying, oh, 
uh, there is a right way to be a boy and a girl. And awesome. if you feel, well, because if I'm a boy who likes to uh, play with dolls or wear pink, then, oh, you might be a girl, actually. No, that's not true. And if we yeah, want to talk, well, hold on. If we want to dress like me, then. If we want to talk. like a man and then just say If we want to talk about the truth, if we want to talk about factual information, you can look at the international classification of diseases, and they talk about gender identity disorder, gender dysphoria, mm -hmm. and it explicitly says that mere tomboyishness is not enough to warrant diagnosis of gender dysphoria or any concern even. There is a separation there. We're talking about a intense feeling of discomfort that intrudes with your day-to-day -day life. That's different than someone who's comfortable being a girl, but just likes to do things that are kind of stereotypically boy things to do. Probably all agree like slavery is bad, right? Well, how come God in the Bible is okay with it? Leviticus 25, 44, God told his people they can get slaves. The point being though, if you're saying slavery is bad, yeah, but maybe what if God says it's okay then? Well, now we don't even know. Now maybe slavery is okay in some well, context. Why would you say your morality, bad? hold on, wait. Why, why, your, because what? it's harming other people and you're taking away people's free will. You're taking away people's rights well, and their why autonomy. Why is that bad? Because you can't own another Because you can't own another human being and have a long home. I was going to say, but if you don't believe in religion or right and wrong, yeah. it's like, why is it bad? Because exactly. it leads to a literal collapse on society. And then even if you have nothing but, but selfishness, hold on, wait, wait, wait. Even classed. if you have nothing but selfishness, I can say, I care about what? me. I don't want to be a slave. So I don't want to live in a world where that's a risk for me to become a slave. I can reason this purely from selfishness. And so, the point about but slavery. That's subjective, that, isn't that? The point that I'm getting out about slavery is that you're saying our morality must come from God, but yet God has done nothing when it comes to give us consistent morality, because now we don't even know if slavery is good or bad, because God said it was okay. Again, you don't need the spiritual or religion side of things to come to moral conclusions. Like, for example, I think we could probably all agree, like, slavery is bad, right? Well, how come God in the Bible is okay with it? Leviticus 25, 44, God told his people they can get slaves from the nations around them, own them as property, and beat them, and as long as the slave doesn't die, they won't be punished because the slave is their property. God's words. Christians who were against freeing slaves were citing the Bible to defend slavery. So this notion that our morality comes from God or the Bible or Christianity is flawed. It's not true. God himself says we can do things that are immoral. I disagree. You disagree that God said it was okay to have slaves? That God uh, permits immoral actions. Is slavery wrong? I would say it is wrong because all men are created equal mm -hmm. um, in the eyes of God. So then God said it was okay to do something wrong? I don't think, he, well, God has created us, and I, feel, I mean, I'm not super religious, but we're fallen, so he allows us to sin, so he allows us to He said to, you can get slaves and beat things, them. But if we want to- Which, Can I cut in here for a second? Thanks. This but is the I thing, is, is Carrie is right when you say that like, statistics can be, you're right too, that like it's statistics good. can be skewed. Of course, statistics shouldn't be treated like the end all, this is like gospel, mm -hmm. but what they do is they give you a valuable insight into larger numbers that you would not be able to have just by personal experience or anecdotes. You cannot acquire that same kind of knowledge by just talking to people because you yourself will always have a selection bias compared to a larger cohort of individuals. And so studies can be biased, they can be skewed. I don't think they're gospel and this means like bow down and it's right no matter what, but I think that it still tells you something valuable. And based on what we know thus far, it seems that detransition rates are significantly lower than an epidemic of detransitioners. And then the last thing I'll no, say is- a epidemic of trans. Oh, sorry, okay, an epidemic of trans people, that's fine. And you're, that, and by the way, you're right about that too. More people are identifying as trans, and that's something that, maybe that statistic is skewed. But it's still a statistic, so it gives us something valuable and valuable insight, but it would be wrong to be like, this is the gospel, this is true without a doubt, because it's a statistic, right? Oh. So people have there's nuance. Trans. People have Thank you. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, for me, like, I definitely wouldn't describe me changing my politics as traumatic, but it was definitely difficult because well, first of all, thankfully, when I hear you guys tell your stories about like the very strict families with the conservative sort of beliefs or whatnot, like I was raised pretty apolitically. Like my parents were definitely still like Republican voters, but they were more religious. That that's kind of where I have the trauma is the religion <laughs> stuff. As far as the politics, they were kind of just mostly just kind of kept quiet about it. My grandparents were really passionate about it, so I had some external influences. But when I first was conservative, um, that's when I started my YouTube channel, which I cultivated to, I think it was over 600,000 subscribers when I had a shift in my political views, which anyone who's built any social media following can tell you that if you build your following on a certain niche and then change that niche, that is like a really bad business move to do. Mm. Um, but for me, since I originally started my channel as a means to give myself a voice to be true to myself, I knew that whether I had a lot of followers or no followers or if I lost a bunch of followers, that wasn't really like the reason I was doing it. So 
it was kind of a sacrifice I was willing to make. So I, I definitely wouldn't say that was traumatic, but it was definitely a little scary to like build a large audience. I mean, I lost over 100,000 followers after I announced that. So again, things I was, yeah, things I was prepared for, like even if you look at my channel now, I have over 500,000 subs, but my view counts are significantly lower. And it's just something that I was prepared for already. Um, so yeah, I definitely wouldn't say that was traumatic, but as far as it being like a difficult thing, as far as like the practicality of the politics changing as well, um, definitely something very difficult. People on the left, I think because you're more emotional, inherently you're gonna care more about people's feelings. I'm not really one to care that much. That's why I'm on the other side, you know what I mean? But I'll give you guys that credit. <laughs> I actually agree with what you're saying a lot because um, they've even done like literal brain scans and they can actually predict people's political beliefs based on their brains yeah. up to like 80 to 90 percent accuracy like it's insane yeah. and so I think well you're right that dem <laughs> people on the left do tend to think more so I think it's with their left side of the brain um, that has more emotion involvement which can be both a blessing and a curse I think mm -hmm. at times because Politics are also about factual information yeah. and about what is and isn't correct or true at the time. Mm -hmm. And so feelings are obviously not all that matter. Um, but yeah, Democrats do tend to be more compassionate at the end of the day, just truthfully, because of what you said, they tend to have more feelings in general. Yeah, and I when I, I was on the left my whole life, and like I was literally an emo kid. <laughs> like uh -huh. I was literally an emotional emo kid. So it's like funny being on this side now. Now I kind of like, I'm a lot more analytical about things. Mm -hmm. I try to cut the emotion as honestly a survival tactic at this point. Mm -hmm. And now mm -hmm. it's totally different from what it was, you know, like maybe like a hundred or something years ago. And that's, but who cares? That if we, <laughs> again, if, but if, if your theory doesn't have, you know, the backbone to last if you look 200 years in, the, in its history, then I'd say that, you know, there's it's something It's not feminist to, theory, it's just the concept of gender, gender understanding. Theory. So it's just a no, concept, so no, it's not yeah. real. Wait, <laughs> gender exists as a result of human interaction because it is a social construct. Do you think that men wear suits because of biology? Do you think there's a biological thing though that makes men wear suits, or do you think that it's I a think, culture? I think men and male and female, men and women are different, so they will wear different things. Yeah, yeah but what, but, okay, sure, fair, but yeah. who determines those different things? I mean, individuals do. Yeah. Over so time. it's social. And so you're, it you, social. you're acknowledging there is a social component to gender then? Absolutely. What I'm saying is that um, gender is not some part of personhood that, it, you know, get, by giving it a name, it helps to talk about, um, to, you know, to, to actually have a discussion and talk about these norms that men and women fall into.